Hello everyone, Ryan Baxter here, uh, back again with another video of uh, Bluemix. And uh, in the past few videos I've been talking about um, Bluemix and the Internet of Things, and I showed you how you can take advantage of IBM's Internet of Things cloud uh, to uh, publish and, and fetch data from uh, a Texas Instrument sensor tag, uh, and then consume that data in, in various applications that get deployed to Bluemix. Uh, one of the applications I showed you uh, was a Node-RED application running on Bluemix, um, that was uh, very simple. It basically connected to the IBM Internet of Things cloud and, and piped the data from the various topics out to a debug node. And you can see here that we have you know, data flowing out of our debug mode nodes uh, for the uh, air um, um, uh, sensors on the sensor tag. Um, so uh, this is very simple, and, and you're going to actually want to uh, do something else with the data besides uh, put it in the debug node. And, um, one of the things you might want to do is, is uh, store the data uh, into a database. Um, and uh, this is a very common uh, thing that you might want to do with certain types of data. Um, so say we wanted to uh, store the air temperature data uh, into a database uh, so we can uh, keep a, a record of, of what the air uh, uh, values were over time. So I can uh, uh, easily do that with Node-RED. Um, so if we look in the storage section uh, of Node-RED, you'll see that there is a Redis and, Mongo and a Mongo database uh, set of nodes uh, for storing data. Um, so we could easily store the air temperature or air sensor data uh, into a Mongo database uh, right within our, our Node-RED application. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is get a Mongo database service and bind it to our application. So I'm going to go back to Bluemix here. And I'm, uh, on, uh, I'm already uh, in the application view for my, my Node-RED application here. Uh, and the first thing you may say to you, you may be asking yourself, well, why do I need a Mongo service if I already have Cloudant uh, already bound to the application? Um, so uh, the Node-RED application is using Cloudant to store a database about the different flows you have in Node-RED. Um, but there isn't a node that allows you to easily store data into the Cloudant database. Um, yeah, there's, there, we're working on one that you can, uh, that will add to the, the palette of nodes that you have to select from, uh, but it's not there yet. You could probably store the data uh, in your cloud and database using uh, the HTTP request uh, node if you wanted to, um, since there are REST APIs for cloud, but um, it's, it's kind of easier to just take advantage of the Mongo node, uh, and it doesn't really cost you anything uh, extra to, to do this. So uh, I'm going to click Add a Service here. And I'm going to select my uh, Mongo Lab service uh, from the catalog, and then I'll just click Create. And once the service is created, uh, Bluemix will ask me to restart the application. And once your application is restarted, you're ready to take advantage of the Mongo Lab service you just bound to the application. So I'm going to go back to Node Red, and I'm going to um, select the uh, the Mongo database node that stores data in the database. So there's two nodes. There's one that will store data to the database and one that will fetch data to the database. We're going to right now use the one that's going to store data to the database. So we're going to uh, drag and drop that onto our, our sheet here. And um, we need to go ahead and configure the Mongo database node. So uh, we're going to select an external service here and we're going to add a new Mongo database uh, server. And now we need to fill out this form with the details on how to connect to the, to the Mongo, Mongo database. So we can easily get those details just by um, showing our credentials here from the service. And there's a URI here which contains all the details. So the first part of the URI up until the first colon here is the username. And we'll put that in here. And then after the colon and up to the at sign is the password. So I'm just going to add that password and paste it in here. And then uh, after the at sign uh, is the host name. And that goes up to the next colon. And we'll paste the host name in here. And uh, next we need the port, and that's right after this colon. So we'll copy the ports and paste the port in. And then we need the database, and that's uh, everything after the slash here is the database. So we're going to copy that and paste that into the database. And then we're just going to give this a name. We'll call it uh, Mongo Lab, and click Add. Now we need to pick a collection to use. We're just going to call this Air. 
and we want to save uh, everything and we just want to only store the message.payload object and not the entire message object. And then we'll just click OK here. And now that we've configured our Mongo service, we can just connect the two together. And now when I deploy this, uh, our everything coming from the IoT Air app uh, will actually um, uh, be stored into uh, the, uh, the Mongo Lab database. So I'm going to click Deploy. And then uh, I can easily verify that things are being stored into the database by just going back to Bluemix here, clicking on my Mongo Lab service, and launching a dashboard. Now from within the dashboard, I'm going to select uh, the right database here, and our database was, I'm just going to double check, see what it was. Our database was uh, ending in EUF. So it's this one here. And we can see that we have our air collection, and we have nine documents already stored within it. We can see here's the air temperature data being stored into the collection uh, from the sensor tag. So we have uh, a couple of documents storing uh, already uh, with the data. So great, our data is now being stored into our database uh, right from Node Red. Now you probably want to access that data in some way. Well, you have a couple options here. You could go ahead and create a new application using whatever language you want, whatever runtime you want, and bind this Mongo database to that application and then build a REST API around that or build an application around it in some way. Or you can actually create a REST API right from within Node-RED to uh, access the data from the Mongo database. So how do you do that? It's actually very easy. You want to use the uh, HTTP input node. So we're going to drag an HTTP input node to our screen here. We're going to configure this. We're going to say, yes, I want a get method. And I basically want to create a simple REST API that will return back all the uh, air data stored into the Mongo database. So I'm going to create a URL for the API. We'll call it at slash API slash air slash list. And that will be the name of our method. And we're just going to give this a name so we can know it is. And list. OK. And when a get request comes into that uh, API, I basically want to go ahead and fetch everything from the air collection and return it back to them. Um, so I can do that with the other Mongo database node here. Uh, and this is the, the node that actually queries the database. So I'm going to dra drag and drop that here. And again, I need to configure it. I'm going to tell it to use the external service, and it's going to use the Mongo Lab service. And the collection is air. And uh, this actually, um, uh, this actually, this node will actually execute the find method within the Mongo API. And the find method uh, uh, will take one parameter, which is a, an object um, that you can use to um, basically filter uh, or select specific uh, types of uh, documents from the, the collection. Uh, in this case, we want to return everything. So if you don't pass anything to that find method, um, it will uh, just return everything. And so we don't actually need to do anything else. We're just going to say when this API is is called, just go and get every document out of the, data, the, collection, the air collection and return it to us. So how do we return it? Well, again, we can use uh, the HTTP response node here, the output, and we'll drag and drop that here. But before we actually respond, we want to do a little bit of configuration to the response. So um, the, the response node... Uh, Basically, we'll send whatever is in message.payload back uh, in the response. And you can configure the status code by setting message.status code, but you, you can configure the headers by setting message.headers. We want to actually configure the header um, so that the header is returning JSON back. It says the content type is JSON. So we can easily do that by just dropping in a little function node here. We'll connect it to uh, from the Mongo Lab output. And we're going to just configure the message object a little bit. So we're going to say message.headers. Uh, equals uh, an object that has content type and uh, we're going to set the content type to application uh, slash JSON and that's all we have to do and we'll just give this a name content type and click OK and the output of that will then pipe into our HTTP response so we're just going to fix our nodes up a little bit here and now, if I deploy this, I should be able to hit um, uh, API slash air slash list and get everything back from our Mongo database in the, in the air collection. So I'm going to open up our uh, REST client plugin here in Firefox, and I'm going to hit that API. Oops. 
using this URL, and it is at um, uh, API slash air slash list. And if I click uh, send, I get a response back. And you can see the response has all the documents uh, from the database. There's a lot in there because we've been storing data for a while now and it's constantly sending data every five seconds. Um, but this is everything that's in the Mongo database. Uh, and we can do just double check that our content type was uh, application slash JSON, which it is. So that's how easy it is to basically store data from uh, anything really into a Mongo database. In this case, we're using uh, IoT data into a Mongo database and then start creating a REST API around that database uh, to return data from it. And we did that with all writing no code, just basically dragging and dropping uh, nodes onto the sheet and, and configuring it and deploying it to the node red. So a really quick and easy way to start uh, leveraging data from your IoT apps. Thanks again. Hope you liked the video.